I'm watching this uh, 49ers game. Yeah, dude, brutal. Here's, here's, you can shoot down this statement. You can say I'm the biggest fucking idiot, but I just need to understand. Let's talk. At the playoff level, mm -hmm. do you need your quarterback to be able to put the game in his hands to win? Yes, to win a Super Bowl, unless you have a historically great defense. Yeah. And that's, I can literally think of one exception, which, which is, is Baltimore Ravens yep. in like 2000. Yep. You need, at some point, you will need your quarterback. And even the San Francisco quarterback. Second half, he started making plays. That's, but there were moments where he put the team on his back. Yeah. There were a couple runs. Yeah. He made some good throws. Um, throws on the run, which is a big thing. Throws in a, but, and also, I think, uh, obviously, um, Jared Goff, th there was a couple, like... Yeah, he missed a couple long passes that would have... Really and even, like, the, the interception, like, bouncing off of the fucking face mask. That was and then, unbelievable. Whatever. That was very lucky on Brock Purdy's part. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, you start to see it also with Patrick Mahomes, where there are points in a game yeah. where he will put the team on his back. He yes. will just make the play. He'll do the extra thing, yeah. which you don't think can really happen with football because there's so many guys on the field, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, one guy can't really change the game. Maybe one guy can change the game when he's the quarterback, and that needs to happen in playoffs. He literally touches the ball every offensive play. Yeah. There's almost no plays where he doesn't get the ball. So he has the ability, even on a handoff, he's touching it. But every time he passes 40 times a game, yeah. he can change the entire game. A receiver so that's, gets eight So that's expected game. then. So yeah. then, then the question I have is because there's that great clip that was going out with like Odell Beckham Jr. sitting on the sideline with uh, Lamar Jackson. You yeah. see this? And he goes... I'm going to fuck it up. But he um, he, he said something like, uh, you know, like, hey, when you when you let loose or when you get on your feet, you change the dynamic of the game. I think he was almost like imploring him yeah. to like run yes, the ball yes. a little yeah. bit. And maybe that's Odell going, hey, we need you yes. to put us on your back. Absolutely. Mm. Put on the fucking cape, which I've seen you do many times. Yeah. Just do it. You got huh. this. Get out of your head. Go be you. So it's, a, yeah, it's really, so that... Can you win a Super Bowl with a bad quarterback? Yeah, again, if you have, like, the, the Ravens, Trent Dilfer wasn't bad, but they'll call him a game manager. I looked up the worst super quarterback Hasselbeck. to win. Dilfer was yeah, the first one. First one. And he wasn't, but Hasselbeck didn't win a Super Bowl. Trent uh, Dilfer, they lost to, I think, the Steelers or yeah, something. You're right, but yeah. Trent Dilfer wasn't awful. He can't, at that point, we call you a game manager. Like, just don't throw interceptions. Don't hurt us. Just get us down the field once or twice. If we kick field goals every time, that's fine. Our defense is not giving up any points. We'll win. So the idea is the defense is going to put the offense in great positions to score. And just in other words, like pin yeah. them down on the. Yeah, we're not giving up any points beyond that. We're yeah. just not. You're not going to score on us. You're not going to get in field goal range. You're not going right. to get into a touchdown. You're right. not. So meaning score like six points, we win. Exactly. But so basically, you're going to force them to punt. And if you're in an advantageous field position because of those punts. Get 30 yards. Yeah. If you start on the 50, get 30 yards. Yeah. We'll kick a field goal. Absolutely. Got it, got it, got it. We'll got turn it. the. We'll get you turnovers. We'll do everything. Yeah. And again, that is the probably the greatest defense ever. So then, Top two for sure. So then what happened to Lamar? Dude, I so here's the thing. I don't, I've, I'm, as I'm realizing I'm 40, I don't want to like sit there and have just shit on young kids playing a game that are like, I do think he puts too much pressure on himself. Okay. What happens, and I think this happened with the Cowboys quarterback. Your first few playoff games, if you don't win, this narrative starts to form, especially if you're uh, you as good as Lamar playoffs. Jackson is. Lamar yeah, Jackson's yeah. so fucking good. So this pressure, every time he underperformed in the playoffs, doubles, triples, quadruples. And now it's like he can't fucking escape it. And I felt watching the game, he's trying to force it. He's like trying to hit home runs. Dude, he had an insane touchdown, the first touchdown. Mm. But I felt like he kept going for these long passes and not just... Hey, trust your instincts. Fucking run if you need to run. Hey, here's an eight-yard underneath pass. Take that. Take that. Take uh, that. You know, I'd, I'd like to make a comparison to uh, one of the greatest sports ever. What, which sport? Paddle. Uh, oh, okay. I absolutely sucked at it. I got my ass kicked, but I was playing with a guy who was uh, basically like a pro. He's like the teacher. And he was making some mistakes. They were my faults mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. And Basically, what's happening is he's trying to finish every point he can yes. because I'm on his team. Right. So if he just you. gets it over and they get it back to me, that might be their point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can kind of score on me whenever the fuck they want. So I saw him making some mistakes, and then I and I realized, 
oh, he has to take more chances. That's probably what Lamar is doing. Yes. He's going, I can't let this narrative build about yeah. me. I got to drive the ball down we the field every win. This is the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is on the other side. That's adding to the— Oh, that's the other thing. That's your rivalry. This is the darling of the league. This is the person that everybody yeah, thinks— I wouldn't even—yeah, that's true also. I'm thinking, this guy's so fucking good. Mm. If I don't put, if I don't get seven every time, I don't know if we beat them. We got to get touchdowns. Yeah, we yeah, got to yeah. hit home runs. That's the only way you beat a quarterback that that's that great. Yeah. Uh, and even like to tie it to what I always tie everything to comedy. Have you ever gone on stage and been like, I really want to do well mm. instead of just <laughs> I want to have fun? Mm. When you start focusing on how well you're gonna do and how yeah. hard you're gonna chase and the kill, it almost always is worse than if you're like, Hey, let me just have fun. Yeah. Do my fucking thing. Trust my instincts. Everything will work out. Yeah. And I feel that's happening with Dak Prescott. I I feel it's happening with Lamar. And again, I'm not trying to be critical of children when I'm 40. Yeah. And they did this at a higher level than I could ever dream of. But I do, as like a, an older guy watching younger kids, I'm like, ah, fuck, you're, you're putting too much pressure on yourself and you're trying to do too much. Mm. That's how I feel. Now, you guys all watched that San Francisco game? Oh, yeah, it was so brutal, man. No. You didn't watch it? Okay. Oh, God. Uh, and again, I'm watching the game. Listen, I'm a casual, okay? This kid, Purdy. Yeah made big boy decisions in the second half. Yeah. And I was just incredibly impressed. Like he he could have checked down. He could have thrown out a bat. Like there are moments where instead of running for fucking 12, 15 yards, getting that first down, he could have done the safer thing to do. Yeah. He made the decision in that moment in the biggest game of his life. This is a rookie. Second year. Oh, Still, I thought this is second year, but the last pick in the draft. They literally call that pick oh, Mr. Yeah, Irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they right, never right. go. It's there's like yeah. 230 picks. He's number 232 yeah. or whatever. Wow. The last possible pick. Hey, anyway, I was just like impressed by the yeah. balls of it. Yeah, I was too. And I'm I was never a believer. And in the first half, I was feeling vindicated. I was like, dude, everybody's talking about this guy's MVP. I don't get it. Yeah. But in the second half, I think Troy Aikman also said a thing where he said, like, I just knew in the playoffs things slow down at a certain point every game. The defense is not going to be this excited, coming at me this hard. It's going to slow oh, down at a certain oh, yeah, point. Yeah, 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 They're yeah. going to get a little tired. The crowd is going to calm down. And that's that's all. You just got to wait that out. And I don't think he did it wittingly, but I think Brock, Brock Brady waited that out. The whole Detroit tidal wave of energy and ferocity and all that, it, he ended up just kind of waiting it out, and then as things settled down, they got a little momentum. He made plays when he needed to, and they mm. won, and you have to give him credit. I don't know if he can beat Mahomes. Yeah, so what happens in the Super Bowl? San Francisco, I think, is the better team, I think, just because they have so many weapons on offense, and their defense isn't it. KC's defense is really good this year, Yeah, but I just know the reputation of San Francisco's defense, at least. I but they're also going up against the greatest. I've, and you think I, he'll be the greatest ever? I think he Brady's career was so long. I don't. You can't say Mahomes is the greatest now. But I've never seen quarterback play this well ever at like in just a window of time. What is that shit? I always say about me. I'm a prisoner of the moment. Prisoner that term. of the moment. Yeah, all sports players. But bro, athletes. we are such prison. Like yeah. literally, the greatest. A year ago, we were saying that Tom Brady was the greatest athlete of all time. <laughs> I, like, I nobody will that. ever touch this. And we're already saying that there's another quarterback Who that could is be. potentially better. Potentially, yeah. He's not there yet. I will say this. I've never seen it. Like he, in five years, who knows what he's going to do? Yeah. That's part of Brady's greatness is 20 years or whatever yeah. being amazing. Right now, no one's ever played quarterback this well. And I don't think that's a crazy opinion at all. In my lifetime, not even close. Hmm. He can do everything. Big boner madness. Blue Chew has got your back. Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra Cialis, but this is the Chew, okay? It's one that we rock with, and this is the one that you're gonna keep your girl satisfied with. Satisfied? No, no, no. You're gonna keep your girl shaking. Mm -hmm. She's gonna be shaking. In her thighs, getting the workout, okay? Way better than any of those classes she's doing. This is the Chew, okay? Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra Cialis. I'm just telling you, but this is the Chew. Okay, you're gonna get your first month free. First month free, all you gotta do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code flagrant, you get your first month free, you pay the $5 shipping, and you enjoy. Let's get back to the show. Do you think the Lions lost was a coaching mistake? I do, and I love that coach. Oh, you don't like going for it on fourth? I, I love going for it on fourth, I do, but I actually- you should be working at Madden, bro. I don't think I, ever, <laughs> I don't think that ever didn't work. Yeah. yeah, and I love playing the game like that, and I think, I heard somebody say, uh, he had a really good point. He was like, Detroit had such a stink of losing. I think he is trying to get rid of, in their play, the players' minds, like, we're not losers. Mm. We go for the win. We go for it on fourth uh, down. We go for two-point conversions. We're fucking winners. We go for the kill. Mm -hmm. But 
I remember texting my friend. There was another fourth down where he decided to kick a field goal. This or, is the, the second end of the first one? Half. Oh. At the end of the first half, he kicked a field goal, took the safe three points. It was fourth and goal with like 10 seconds left in the first half. I was telling my friend, I think I might go for this because if you get it, you fucking break San Francisco's spirit. The risk is if you don't get it, San Francisco because has at tons half of time, it was 24. It was uh, 21-7. Or 21-7. You get a seven. touchdown, it's 28-7, and San Francisco's got to be down <sighs> mentally. Hmm. And I was like, dude, I would... And now at the end, he kicked the field goal, and I was like, that's fair. Because if he didn't get it, you gave San Francisco a ton of life to get the ball back. Yeah. But I do remember texting him. It was fourth and three. Detroit is up 24-10. San Francisco just kicked a field goal. They could kick a very safe field goal. Or go for it. Maybe it was fourth and two. But I texted my friend, I would not go for it here. I would kick the field goal because they just scored three. You need to show San Francisco, you can get your little three points. We're going to keep matching you. Yeah. They went for it, didn't get it. Then San Francisco had the luckiest fucking deep pass I've ever seen in my life, frankly. But once they got that, I knew. I was, was like, over. oh, it's over. Mm. It's, they're still down 24-17. They're still down 24-10 at that point. But I was like, they're going to score. They're on the two-yard line. The momentum. And the momentum is so crazy. He just fuck. And that was a losing decision. And I love that coach. I think he's great. But that was a losing decision. Damn. They always say that shit about... uh, And it was even in that quarterback documentary on uh, Netflix or the show. I watched parts of it. Mahomes is so fucking cool. But it was cool to just see all of them. But like, they really harp on how much time they're spending studying. Yeah. And I didn't believe it until I saw Holmes' body. Mahomes' body? Or Mahomes' yeah. body. Yeah. Like, there's a picture of Mahomes' body in the locker room. Yeah. And um, it looks uh, studious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like these guys are elite like, athletes. Looks like he plays paddle. Exactly. That's a paddle body. That's a paddle that body. That is a paddle body. <laughs> it's so funny. We're talking about. And he can run. Run his ass off. Yeah. This is an elite athlete. Yes. So why do quarterbacks look like this? I Dude, I haven't figured it out. And I know he works. He trains very hard. I think they're training in a very specific way that isn't, I need to look shredded. Yeah, yeah. It's like baseball pitchers. You ever see baseball pitchers? Yeah. yeah. They they're train. Like, like yeah, they're they're very... extremely good at what they do. Yeah. But it's just like here down. And then like, everything is... else, why are we wasting it? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. true. Baseball There's... pitchers, it's mass moves mass. So the heavier you are, like the bigger the pitcher, the longer they are, the taller they are. Oh, the, interesting. Yeah, move the baseball. I also thought about this. We were talking to some football player, and he basically said, like, if I'm going up against a team that I know has, like, big bruising linebackers. I was thinking that. He was like, I'll add more weight that week. I go, what? Oh, I didn't know. He goes, yeah, I like coming in a little heavier. Yeah. Because I'm going to have to, you know. You have to take force. So It's physics. An extra 10, 15 pounds of fat when 300-pound guys are tackling me. Yeah. Who cares? I can use that probably. probably So maybe this protects them a little bit. I bet you this helps. Being lean and shredded can probably get more damage done to you when legitimate 340-pound guys are trying to tackle you. Yeah, Yeah. or even just throwing the ball, like just getting weight by it. Did you see that fucking tackle on Purdy where the guy basically like slid over his face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That shit looked terrifying. Yeah. I think it weirdly kind of helps. Wait, explain. Just one... Fucking good hit, I think, in a high stakes moment can but bring But he was you... already down or something. Uh, yeah, and then the guy dove yeah. head first over him. Like he was sliding at the second. And then you saw. Yeah. Uh, but I think a good hit, if you're a quarterback, you don't want fucking concussions. But I think one good shot can kind of take you out of your head and be like, oh, I need to be in the moment. Mm-hmm. I kind of needed that. Yeah. That's uh, helping me down. It's a heck of like, like a yeah. like a uh, boxing. Yeah. You get caught one time. And, and you're then like, like oh, we're, yeah, we're fighting. Yeah, we're fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this ain't a sparring yeah. session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can't compare a lot of things to boxing. Football yeah. is war. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you said, it's yeah. war. It's boxing. Yeah. Okay, so Casey got it. I, dude, I hope so. I obviously hate San Francisco. I'm a Cowboy Casey fan. Got it, you think easy? I hope so. They got Taylor, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's true. That's God true. That's true. This bitch don't lose, bro. Yeah. That's true. Yo, is She's Taylor off. is Taylor Swift the most emotionally tough human being on the planet? I was thinking about this exact thing yesterday. Actually, it's really funny that you bring that up. Explain. Who gets more scrutinized? She's literally supporting her boyfriend at his yeah. football games. Yeah. She is the busiest person at that football game. Yeah. Everybody else that organized their schedule to be there. She had to do a lot more. Yeah, she had yeah. to move probably 20, 30 people. If she goes to the Super Bowl, she's flying from a concert in Tokyo straight to the Super to Bowl. To the Super Bowl. She's being the best girlfriend. Like, all things considered. Mm-hmm. She's prioritizing this guy in these massive moments in his life while she has a way busier schedule than even he does. And she's trashed for it. 
If yeah. she supports, she's trash. If she sings along to the song, she's trash. If she gets one thing wrong in the booth, she's trash. And she knows that there's cameras on her the entire time. And no matter what she does, if she fucks up, she's trash. I think it is. Ooh. I do think, yeah, no, I think it's gotten too far. Like, here's what I'll say. It's, it's no, like, oh, it's sorry, just to, just, just to clarify what I'm saying is, I'm not saying we should feel bad. I didn't say that. I said the emotional toughness to deal with that. Mm. Is, is admirable. I, I'm not saying that we, like, you know, she's got a great life. She's got these friends. She's got billions of dollars. She could do whatever she wants. She could fly around yeah. the world. She's, you know, uh, she's got her passion. She's living through it. But dealing with the scrutiny, and she deals with a lot, that's admirable. Yeah, and here's what I was going to say. I do think it's gotten, I love hating on Taylor, but when she's fucking on the field trying to kiss her boyfriend after the championship game and people on the field are yelling at her, you ruined the NFL. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to games. Now, I also think a lot of that hate is a reaction to the absurd love that she gets. That's a little bit too much. Yes, of course. Now, it's kind of an equal and opposite reaction, but still, that's when I was like, oh, this is, cr like, you know, yelling at these things at a person that's just there on a field that you've ruined a sports league that you're actually making yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars for, <laughs> yeah. it would drive me fucking crazy. Yeah. And I get she, where it comes from, but it's gone too far. If she didn't show up to any games, people would be like, she this sucks. selfish bitch yeah. only cares about herself. She wants to support her man. She's just doing this for uh, for clout or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's a rough, like, uh, it's a great life she has. But the amount of shit yeah, that she's starting to get, I'm like, this is too far. Yeah, what's the deal with the kicker for the Ravens and uh, Travis Kelsey and, and Mahomes, like, kicking a shit? Oh, out. yeah, this is a little pregame thing that I thought people kind of made too big of a deal about. So, typically, teams, from what I understand, warm up on different sides of the field. Yeah. But also, typically, kickers will warm up on both sides of the field because wind is different yeah. depending on which way you're facing. So... The Ravens kicker, Justin Tucker, who's fuck great for what it's worth, but he's kicking on in the Chiefs end zone. And then Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are like moving every, they're like getting the, the placeholders out of there. They keep throwing his football. They're like, you're not fucking warming up on our side, mm. which is like shitty, I guess. But I also love that. Bro, this is a fucking championship game. We're not here to be nice and buddy buddy. Mm. Didn't Travis say something specifically on the pod about it? I think he responded. He oh. referenced it. Where basically he was like, "Yeah, you were intentionally putting it while we were warming up in like, like the quarterback area while we were warming up." Yeah, like, like it, you can come to our side, but you have to like move off to the side. Like don't be in the quarterback. It, area. That makes even more sense. He made it seem like. He was painted to be this bad guy, but it was really gamesmanship on Justin Tucker's part. Yeah, and they're just not having it. Yeah, exactly. And I wish the Cowboys had players like that. Mm. Fuck you. With some moxie. That. Yeah, like, the uh, dude, there's a pregame speech before the Cowboys game that I'm going to kind of probably bastardize. But, like, the Aaron Jones, the Packers running back, I think it is, he's doing the speech to his teammates. He's like, we're going to punch these front runners in the mouth. They're going to fold. They're not, they're not built like us. Mm. You're not saying that to the Chiefs. Nobody's facing the Chiefs and is like, they're not built like us. You're going to bully these guys. They're soft. You're not saying that. Mm. You're just not. Patrick Mahomes is a fucking dog. Travis Kelsey's a dog. Chris Jones is a dog. Sam Snead is a dog. You're not doing that with them. Mm. It's like, these are champions and they're dogs and they fight for it. Jordan would have done the same shit. Mm. Fuck you. Warm, fucking warming up on my side? Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah, Bro, I like that. Hockey's too. great. This kind of like, no, 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 this, I'm, talking, I'm serious, bro. Like the reason hockey's fun is because there's so many like sort of rules that are unspoken and they're yeah. enforcer rules and things like this. So like that split, they, they warm up at the same time and like you do not cross the line. And if your puck goes across, you can't go get it. There's like little rules like that. And if you like fuck with the goalie on your team, that guy's going to get absolutely yeah. mangled. There's like gentlemen's agreements. This happens in baseball a lot too. Yeah, yeah. baseball has it. The in, most known one is probably the bat flipping one. Yeah, yeah which yeah. they're past finally. Now if you go ahead and flip your bat. Wait, really? Finally, yeah. Sort of. Oh, really? I, I thought that. it's still like a Some like people a fuck I think you. still take it poorly, but if and it's maybe you're like there's like a level where it's too much, yeah. but they they don't mind the bat flipping. Yeah, you know, it's it, I think we talked about this on the pod before, but it is funny that the single hardest thing to do in all sports is to hit a baseball. Yeah. Even harder is to hit the baseball out of the stadium feet yeah. or whatever, that yeah. you're that you're playing in, and you can't even celebrate. Yeah, you're supposed to <laughs> that's right. I never did. Exactly. Run so the base. If there, was, yeah. if there was ever a justified celebration in sports, Dude. it's just throwing the bat up in the air yeah. after you did a miracle. Football's like, gotten to the point, and I think you should be allowed to do it. But you recover a fumble, the entire defense runs into the end zone and celebrates. We just landed on the football when it fell out. Mm. Baseball, you hit, you hit a baseball. You're saying even 400. if they don't score? Yeah, dude, even if they don't score now, you've recovered, you intercept a pass, whole team celebrates in the end zone. Yeah, they yeah, all yeah. run to the end zone, <laughs> and then they do a celebration, and it's fun, dude. We all love it. 
No I don't, touchdown. No touchdown. Just the turnover. They got the, the ball. Turnover. Bro, have you seen the chains, turnover chains? No. Unbelievable. So it's in college and high school, and I think in professional sometimes. Probably. It's a massive chain, like big, iced out, like sort of fake chain. Oh, yeah, this is chain. popularized by uh, the University of Miami. Miami. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you catch an uh, interception, you get the turnover chain for the rest of the game to wear on the sideline. It's like massive. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's fire. That is some culture to it. It's fun. Yeah, and baseball, again, I think they're starting. Baseball's to, got a bunch, right? A lot. They're yeah. starting to realize they need to kind of get with the times. Like they added a pitch clock. So oh, the games oh, are way faster those are the now. Change, those are the changes. I think but, that's a great but idea, But they're also too. like, the bad flip, let them fucking flip the bad sometimes. Yeah, let them celebrate. Yeah, the There's stuff. a lot of rules, like celebrating and shit. Like, even when you're running, like, you, you just gotta, gotta go run fast. fast. Yeah. If, you, if you jog, it's disrespectful. Don't stare yeah. down the really? pitcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, if you stare down the pitcher, corny. it's disrespectful. No. Like, that's why black people don't play baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the, but <laughs> yeah. I felt like the 90s, they let that shit rock.